Cheers, Mum. You... <laughs> you, you may recognise me as that kid who went to your school who was uh, best friends with the dinner ladies. <laughs> and when I was at school, they used to say to me, Ryan, you stop getting bullied. So I said, well, you need to stop bullying me then. <laughs> And he said, the best way to not get bullied is by writing poetry. <laughs> you are right to laugh because it didn't fucking help. Uh, <laughs> but to, to relive some of the best moments of my life, I'm going to perform one or two of the poems to, uh, to these guys, if that's okay. Yeah, cool. It's going to have to be. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> this, this, this first poem is called Pauline. The reason why will become pretty obvious pretty early on in the poem. Pauline gasped. She'd never seen a cock so big. She blushed. She blushed as she stared at Robert's prize winning chicken. Whose knob was enormous. Most of my poems are based on true stories. <laughs> but this next one is based around myself, but I've changed my own name within the poem to protect my own identity, so, <laughs> so there's that. Tim's mother called him. Help, I've fallen down the stairs, she screamed onto his answer phone. So Tim called her back, each day for four days. <laughs> no answer. So Tim assumed she no longer needed any help. <laughs> Are you warm in here? Yeah. It's a bit hot in here, isn't it? It's a bit... <laughs> no, no, don't applaud that. <laughs> uh, and let's just sort of, sort of get rid of the comedy for one moment, push that aside. And it's my great-granddad's birthday today, and... Yeah... He's dead. Uh, and I just want... I, I got into poetry because I, I found his war poems. He, so I just want to perform one of those poems that he wrote during the war, if that's OK. It's, uh, you can answer that if you want. It's, it's, called, it's called The Poem from the Trenches, written by my great-granddad. Ich wurde der Tia Kia, wir nil und sie, sie und dir sind von Liebenschwaut. Yes, but not! But, thank you, thank you. No. No, yeah, it, 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 it is what he would have wanted. Uh, I don't just write poems, I also write haikus. And uh, an English teacher sat over there. And, and, and uh, for those who don't know, haikus are just intelligent poems. So if you don't... If you don't get it, <laughs> and, and this, this one's about me mum. Uh, she was a dinner lady at my school. <laughs> and and for, con for context, she used, to, she used to work with a chip pan. Just for, con just for context, really. Because you don't know me mum. You do. It's a weird joke to make about your own mum. <laughs> she went to pick up a mug, but she dropped it. Ah, damn her big greasy hands. So it's just, <laughs> just that, really. Uh, and I, I got this sort of little little bag, uh, little bag thing, and it. I, it contains the very best work of Charles Dickens, as you, as you could tell. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was an ejaculation heart attack. That's in memory of that joke that I'll never be using again. Do you, do you like drinking? No? It, is that the famous Tommy? T tell you what, Tommy, I wrote, I wrote a poem for you. Tommy! 
No, 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 no. I'm on stage. <laughs> oh, Tommy, phone call for mummy. I had to make it rhyme. <laughs> Six comedians. We spend years developing our act, yet you were the funniest here, you legendary twat. <laughs> Do you like relatable poems, Tommy? Yeah, it's, it's nice you're joining in for once. Here's a relatable poem. Peter had been sat in Steve's house for 30 minutes and he still didn't know the Wi-Fi password. <laughs> Wi-Fi sort of makes the wires work. Steve, Steve was a poor host, so Peter killed him. <laughs> but had no idea how to dispose of the body as he still couldn't connect to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, I'd... I often perform my poetry in front of household names, such as uh, Mum, but once I... <laughs> once I got the opportunity to perform in front of these celebrities, I remember Brian Blessed was sat at the back and he just went, Do you just do poems? I said, No, Brian, I'm also pretty good at impressions. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah, the groan was the most appropriate reaction there, thank you. Uh, some comedians say I'm too static on stage. I know, I don't see it myself, but I'm, uh, I'm going to change up my act a little bit uh, and sort of prove them wrong, if that's okay, yeah? Yeah? So this next poem... <laughs> this, this next poem is called... This next poem is called Clickbait and you will not believe the way it ends. <laughs> she wanted to dance. Oh, how she wanted to dance. Blood scattered across the walls, revelers screaming, but still she grooved, stepping over the bodies as she did. The club was chaos, DJ Molotov in hand, but still Sophie Ellis Bexter danced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One Sophie Ellis Bexter fan in the audience there. Uh. Or it could have just been Sophie herself. Uh, my girlfriend, if she existed, uh, she would say to me, Ryan, uh, you dress a bit weird. I say, okay, as I promised to you, I'll start, I'll start wearing more, more neutral colours because uh, I, know, I, know, I know I dress a bit weird. So... My great granddad hates this joke. <laughs> uh, and might as well do another poem. <laughs> uh, this one's called uh, well, it's a it's a ballad, uh, and and for those who don't know, uh, ballads are just slightly longer poems. <laughs> so if you don't get it, you're thick as fuck. It's called The Ballad of Stephen Wimble. Yeah, Stephen's in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, a poem about him. <laughs> Stephen Wimble lived in an ordinary town. He worked an ordinary job and went home to his ordinary wife. But Stephen Wimble was no ordinary person, for he had one leg two meters longer than the other. <laughs> Bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> Just, I don't have enough candles, that really needs a candle. I did that joke in Chester, uh, and I asked the audience, uh, I said, what could you do with a leg two metres longer than the other? And the guy just went, turn on the TV. <laughs> Obviously, remote controls haven't hit Chester yet. <laughs> uh, I've got 25 paper plates. <laughs> and I've got all night. I don't. You okay? Hello? You okay? No, you okay? You've done it again? No, you okay? No, it's okay. No, no, I like it. I like, I like the attention. <laughs> what we're drinking? 
what we're drinking, what we're fucking drinking. <laughs> fucking dr- what, what we're drinking. <laughs> oh, go on. Okay, that's cool. Uh, do you want a plate? Do you want a plate to sort of clear up after yourself, no? Just a straw, yeah, I think you might need more than a straw. It's rosé, you need to throw it in the bin. <laughs> I'm sure the Frog and Bucket has the best rosé available. <laughs> see, see, when audience members don't answer me, I start to panic and sort of just diss the venue instead. <laughs> Imagine, just for one moment, putting yourself in Godzilla's shoes. <laughs> Turning up for a lovely day in the model village only to be shot at. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I consider my girlfriend to be a bit of a wag. Uh, she stinks of dog food. And... <laughs> She, she, says, uh, she says to me, Ryan, why do you always have these weird thoughts? And I, I said, well, because I'm with you. And <laughs> so, so, like, no matter how many fire exits, no matter how many fire exits a venue can have, the fire just won't leave. <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure the Frog and Bucket has ample amount of fire exits <laughs> available. Okay, uh, you missed it, so I'll start again. (laughs) You may recognize me as that kid who went to your school who was best friends with the dinner ladies. (laughs) You've caught up, really. I can... We could do this all day, actually. uh, Malcolm saw the light getting closer. He was scared. There was nothing he could do. The cold metal struck him in the face. His nose bled. His eyes wept. Malcolm had dropped his own phone on his face as he lay in bed. What a fucking prick. <laughs> I, I've changed my mind. I, I am a bit cold, actually. So. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go shortly. Hey. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Fucking boo. Fucking boo. <laughs> You know, you know, that will get you thrown out of Monsters University. That's a really niche, that's a real niche Monsters Inc. <laughs> reference there. Uh, that you won't get because you're not cultured. <laughs> but you are drinking your rosé. Uh, <laughs> okay, I did say I was going to go. Uh, fucking boo. <laughs> right, okay, so... I'm going to do one more poem for you now, before I go, and it's called Clearing My Shit Up. (laughs) I'm trying to do poetry. (laughs) Right, okay, I'm going to ask one thing from you as you leave the stage, and that is, uh, at the count of three, I want one clap. Final break of the evening now, so we're going to have your wheeze if you want one. Don't force it, can cause cystitis, and we'll be back very shortly for our headline act. So give.